When you first start trading cryptocurrency, there are three mistakes in particular that I'd say it's really common to make. So I wanted to share what those are in the hopes that it might help you out. Okay, number one, investing more than you would be totally cool to lose. And this is true regardless of whatever asset you're investing in, whether it's a cryptocurrency or it's a stock. It's something that I first learned when I used to be a professional stock trader. And the reason for this may seem obvious because you don't want to lose more than you would be totally okay to lose. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to regardless pay your mortgage or your rent or whatever your basic expenses are, even if something happens and the investment goes sour. The other thing, though, that it's important to recognize um, that sort of underpins this foundational idea, this advice about trading, is that when you've put in more than you would be totally okay to lose, it makes it a lot likelier that you're going to panic trade because you're going to be freaked out thinking about, you know, like possibility that that money could disappear. And like, what are you going to do if you're then like literally at risk of homelessness or something? When you're panic trading, you're obviously not making necessarily the best decisions that you might be making um, about how to manage your trading position. So you're really helping yourself out if you avoid that by just making sure to never put in more than you'd be totally okay to lose worst case. Number two, this is kind of two concepts, but they're intertwined and they really work together. The second biggest mistake I see new cryptocurrency traders making is waiting too long to get in and then panic selling as the market comes back down. So this points to the old adage, buy low, sell high. Like obviously that's how you make money when you're trading anything. But in practice, it can be very difficult to do. And I found that the experience of this, this concept is something you really learn through actually taking the experiential steps to trade. And we have a course called Cryptocurrency and How to Trade It in which we trade live together with people learning how to trade that can really help with this. If you're interested, you can learn more about it if you click the link. In any case, the way this kind of plays out often is like, maybe you've heard about a cryptocurrency for a while, maybe even for years. Maybe you've heard about Ether, for example, and you thought like, oh, maybe I should pay more attention to that or whatever, but you live your life, you have other stuff going on. And then you start to hear from multiple sources that Ether is going up. Um, like for example, the Ethereum merge is now supposed to happen on September 15th, 2022, which could be, we'll see, a catalyst that really drives prices. So once that happens, it's probably going to be in the news a lot more. But what can happen for people that are new to the sector or, you know, like just becoming aware of the sector is that like, they'll think like, oh, maybe I should pay more attention to that. And then you start hearing about it more in the news or whatever from your brother or your cousin or your friend. And then by the time it's like, oh, yeah, I should really pay attention to this. I'm hearing about it from so many different sources. You look at it and it's already gone up a ton. So then maybe you still get in, but then it has uh, a retracement and the price comes back down. And then you're like, whoa, and you're freaked out. And so then you sell at a loss. So as I said, it's much, much easier said than done. It's something that you learn through practice, but it's to be avoided. You don't want to be FOMOing in, fear of missing out in. <laughs> you want to make sure to do your best to get involved in cryptocurrencies or whatever you're trading when it's cheaper. Um, that's also going to be when it looks less certain, right? But it's those people who are able to take those uh, educated make those educated trades and you know make those informed decisions when the markets are less crazy <laughs> that really benefit when they go up later on. And I want to make sure to do everything I can to share what I know so that good giving people are the ones who benefit from the next cryptocurrency runs. Um, to that end, we have a live webcast that you can watch if you click the link in which I talk more about what cryptocurrency is, the history of cryptocurrency, and various more sophisticated trading strategies I've used in the past to find profitability in crypto. Okay, number three. The number three mistake I often see new cryptocurrency traders make is this, not staking in DeFi. So DeFi stands for decentralized finance. It's sort of a big category. There's a lot of complexity there, more of which I cover in the webcast, if you want to watch the webcast at the link. But in a nutshell, what it means is that it's, it's a tool, a decentralized tool, which is open source and trustless. We don't have to trust someone else in order to uh, find security within the system. The system itself is the uh, provides the security for our transactions. So we don't have to rely on like a bank, a trusted third party in order to securely transact with somebody else. The system itself moderates that for us. So DeFi allows us to effectively be like a bank for each other 
while earning fees ourselves instead of making a bank richer while that bank pays us whatever terrible like half percent um, half percentage point annual interest rate or something ridiculous for banking with that institution. With DeFi, we can avoid that and make that money ourselves by working together in a collaborative fashion. So if you have cryptocurrency, if you're already holding it, that's great. That can end up being super profitable. Obviously, it's done that for a lot of people in the past. But if you're holding cryptocurrency and you're not staking it in DeFi, it's kind of like having a bunch of cash and just stashing it under your mattress. You might as well put the money that you're already holding to work so that it can earn you more money passively. So that's the top three mistakes I would say that I see most frequently. Again, if you're interested in learning more, click the link to watch our free webcast. And at the link, I also have more information about our course, Cryptocurrency and How to Trade It. If you'd like to work together to trade live and dive in more deeply to the theory and the philosophy of cryptocurrency, as well as how to actually experientially learn how to trade it profitably.